Hello everyone. Welcome to the video series of the object oriented programming with the Java. Our today concept that is the concept of object oriented programming. So that is our topic of the today's lecture. I am your instructor Mr. Ankit Patel. So let's start with the concept of object oriented programming. So what are the different concept of object oriented programming? So the first concept that is a class. Now our next concept that is the object. Next that is a data encapsulation. Next that is a data abstraction. Next inheritance. Next polymorphism and the last that is a dynamic binding. So let's start with the first and important concept of the object oriented programming that is a class. Now what do you mean by the class? So class is a logical entity and it is a nothing but it is a collection of variable, object and method. So class is a set of object with and similar property and common behavior and common link to the other object. So basically class is also called as an class is a collection of objects. What do you mean by the object that we are discussing because that is our next topic that is our next concept that is object. What is object? So object it is a real world entity. So if you are think about what is the use of the object. So basically object it is used to access the property of the class. Now how to access the property of the class, what is the syntax of the object, how to create the object of the class that we are discussing later but object is whenever you are creating the class the object role is the most important because using the object you can access the data, the method of the class. Now object is nothing but it is an instance of the class. Suppose you are seen in the figure. Here the one person is there and there are the different different object. So what are the what is object and what is class? So here the person it is an object uh, person it is an class and the person name like the person is Ankit is there, Hiren is there, Suresh is there. So these are the different different person it has uh, nothing but it, these are the object of the class. So this is all about the object. Now our next concept that is the data encapsulation. Now what do you mean by the data encapsulation? So data encapsulation it is a nothing but it is a wrapping of data and function. Wrapping of data and function into single unit. It is called as a data encapsulation. So data encapsulation means it is also known as a class because class is a nothing but it is a collection of method and the variable. So it, the behavior is look like it is also called as a data hiding. Why it is called as a data hiding? Because data hiding means what? In a class all the data and function are combined into the class. And it is access only with the object of that particular class. So if you want to access the data in our main function. So you need to create the object of the class. So using the object you can access the data. So all the data of the class are in the hidden format that's why it is called as a data hiding and again it is a most important feature as far as the security is concerned that is the data encapsulation. Now next concept that is the data abstraction. What do you mean by the data abstraction? So data abstraction is a nothing but the quality of dealing with the idea rather than the event. You can see in the figure in a figure, whenever we got, uh, get the call, we have the two options. Either we are pick up the call or we can reject the call. But in the background, there are the lots of code behind the background. So these two button only shows the pick up the call and reject the call. But in background, there are the so many lines behind the uh, background. Then uh, that's why the data abstraction is what it tells it give only the overview rather than the detail of the data. So it basically it deal with the hiding the internal details and showing the essential things to the user. So it is also known as a 
data abstraction is nothing but it give the abstract view of the data so data abstraction and data encapsulation there is a vast difference between these two because data encapsulation that contain all the details like right? all the method variable object whole the collection is called as a data encapsulation but data abstraction it's only give the overview of the data rather than the dealing with the detail of the data so next concept that is the inheritance now what do you mean by the inheritance so it is a common one inheritance means you can inherit the something from the someone from the other so like you are taking the example like if you have a parent and child is there so your data i can easily inherit it to your child so here the your parent is known as an base class and your child is known as an derived class so in inheritance there is something like that one super class is there and sub class is there parent class is there and child class is there derived class is sorry base class is there and derived class is there so here the concept is uh, nothing but you can access the data of base class to the derived class so this is also known as an data reusability that is uh, that is the most important use of the java that is the most important use of the inheritance that is a data reusability you can reuse the data in a another class and you can access all the data and different different data of one class to the other class so this is the concept call as an inheritance but again there are the different types of inheritance is also there the what are the different types single level inheritance is there multi level inheritance is there then the hierarchical inheritance is there and multiple inheritance is there and the last but not the least that is the hybrid inheritance is there single level inheritance means what all these five types are the concept is similar we are inheriting the data from somewhere what do you mean by the single inheritance one single class is there suppose class a is there and that a is a base class and b is your derived class so here the single class can access the property of single class that is called as a single inheritance but when we are talking about the multi level inheritance here there are the three classes there class a is there class b is there and class c is there here now class a data are accessible by the class b and class b data are accessible to the class c so this structure is known as an multi level inheritance now next that is the hierarchical structure it is structure is similar to the tree type structure one root node is there and two children is there children b and children c so here b and c both can access the data of a class this is structure is nothing but it's called as an hierarchical inheritance now multiple inheritance multiple inheritance structure is like class a and class b is there and c class can access both the data of a and b class so now you can easily access this data into the c class but the structure is not supported in java so that is the most important question in our mind which object oriented concept not supported in java that is the multiple inheritance so multiple inheritance is not supported in java but this type of structure like a b and c this type of structure is implemented in java with the help of the interface and that topic we will discuss in later but again this structure is implemented but this concept is not supported in java now the last but not the least that is the hybrid as the meaning of the hybrid it hybrid the any two combination means any two combination of the inheritance is nothing but it is called as an hybrid inheritance either you can combine a single or multiple either you can combine a multi level and hierarchical any two combination is called as an hybrid inheritance now our next concept that is the polymorphism now what do you mean by the polymorphism so as the word tells poly and morph poly means many and morph means form many form polymorphism it's nothing but ability to take a more than one form so if you talking about the example let's take an example of the addition sign so what is the use of this sign if you are use this sign with the digit like if you are 
calculating like 5 plus 2 that produce the result 7 so addition sign plus sign is used for the addition and as well as plus is also used for the to concatenation of the two string here you can see in the example high plus ankit this result will produce high ankit so here the sign is same but it has the different forms so that is called as an that is called as an polymorphism now our next concept that is a dynamic binding now dynamic binding means what so dynamic binding it is first of all i am telling about you what do you mean by the binding so binding is the connecting a method call to the method body it is called as a dynamic binding now sorry it is called as a binding but what do you mean by the dynamic binding dynamic binding means a code related with the given method is known unknown until the runtime means whenever you run this particular program then and then the call is resolved so dynamic binding in dynamic binding compiler does not decide which method to be called this is resolved at a runtime so this concept is known as a dynamic binding so this is our last concept so thank you very much if you have any doubt regarding this particular video you can feel free to ask me thank you very much